Hi everyone, welcome to you wherever in the world you're watching this. I know we're an increasingly international group, which is great. Today's training is going to be on maths through stories. Uh, one of my favorite areas to share on the training that I do is my normal day job. Um, goes down incredibly well. It's always been in the 11 years I've done this, always been one of my most popular courses. So I thought today I would give you a bit of an introduction on how to use the, the sorts of stories that you have in your collections in school and if you're a parent maybe you've still got you know you've got these books at home as well so i've tried to choose today two examples of books that one i hope everyone has read and the other one is just an example of the kind of book you might do to do the second task okay so maths through stories the first one i have got that i think it might be against the law not to have read this is this little beauty. So here, uh, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, mm, written the same year as I was born, gold, that old. Uh, brilliant, brilliant book. And, and I know it's been franchised to death now, but it, you know, I never really get sick of looking at this. So I want to tell you, just to give you a really simple idea of how I use this with my reception children. And I also used it with year one, year two children as well. So up to seven years old in the UK. So if I turn to, hopefully you know this story, but if I turn to the pages that we're most familiar with, we've got not only uh, some brilliant opportunities to do some subitizing. I did mention this in another video recently, but if you kind of fold back and have a look, particularly as it gets more. So if we get the strawberries page, having a look there at what you can see that you've got a two and a two and a three and a one and four ones and so forth. And you've got the oranges here. Uh, we have got, of course, the very lovely mixed ingredients page here as well. But with my reception children, what we simply did was we used this as the starting point to make our own hungry caterpillar smoothies. So this is a task that you could set for your children at any time. I did this with my children in school. But we started to experiment with what fruits went well together, uh, really good for healthy eating. And we found that you, know, you always have to have some sort of juice or some sort of dairy product to kind of carry the juice, otherwise it's too thick. So we use things like orange juice, you could use water, or you could use milk or any milk substitutes. Um, and we started to look at things like uh, bananas we put in these, we looked at our favorite fruits, we did find, however, that if you put banana in anything, even the smallest amount of banana, it generally just tastes of banana. So that got me into some unexpected territories that we were putting in things like the strawberries and you know, you can imagine the kind of things the children like. Apples don't tend to work so well, soft fruit is better. But we were putting in um, bananas and because it was so banana-y when they tasted it, we got into some fractions work. Now bearing in mind these children are four and five, so we were looking at like half a banana, did that help the taste? Because we were making a, a glass of it each time, and like a quarter of a banana. So we got into the conversations that one banana could make drinks for two people. Or if you put, if your banana was cut into four bits, your one banana could make drinks for four people. So the simple task that my children did, having done lots of tasting and lots of chopping and lots of discussions and all these amazing things that young children need to do and love to do was that they then designed their own recipe for a smoothie and they drew the ingredients in there so we had things like I remember one I liked was like half a banana and something like four strawberries and three blueberries something like that and then a cup of juice I have to excuse my dog Blue is growling in the background, so if you can hear that, it's just him, not the husband. He's at work. Um, so, yeah, so that is a really simple task. Oh, we've got a lot of barking now as well. If he carries on, I will stop the video and carry on later. Okay. Okay, part two of Math Through Stories. Blue is now in the room with me, so I'm hoping he will behave. Uh, so that was the Hungry Caterpillar we looked at, so Hungry Caterpillar smoothies. Um, I've also done a Hungry Caterpillar uh, fruit salads, and you can look at uh, how you're dividing up the fruits, how many bits of fruits, loads and loads of good stuff in that. 
Uh, the second book is this lovely book, which I thought I'd choose this one because it's been around for a long time. It's um, it's a rhyme, you see my, mine's got a, a CD with it as well, so there's lots of opportunities to link with our day two uh, training here. And what I wanted to do here was look at the fact that in any book with pictures, there are masses and masses of opportunities to subvertise. And also wanted to suggest that your children do choose an animal, any animal in the world, but start to do some kind of investigations about that animal. Let's make some little fact cards about the animal. Let's just look up some things about that animal. So I'll give you some more suggestions in a minute. So this one's Rumble in the Jungle. If you haven't got this it's a lovely book and I imagine there's people reading it on YouTube because it's been around a long time so have a look if you haven't seen it before so beautiful pictures of animals hiding can they guess which animals they are and lovely rhyme there so all the time when you're looking at these things now can you see here we've got an opportunity for subvertising Often, and I'll do this on the course next week with those of you that are joining me for the much more intensive maths training, um, children will say things like, oh, look, mummy, look, daddy, three flowers. And we say, oh, yeah, look, let's count them. One, two, three. What well, one of the things we're going to look at next week is that learning to count like that is much, much more difficult than subvertising. So that's one thing to, to notice. But the other thing is a child that's seeing the threeness of three here is seeing it as a whole. And they have the ability then to see in future the two and the one in there and the three ones. It's very confusing. When you count one, two, three, you only say one once. Whereas when you look at three as a whole, there are three ones in there. So subvertising is a skill. So we're going to look at the training starting Monday with those of you that are joining me. Um, if you don't know about the training, look back on the feed in the group and there's an opportunity for you to join us in two weeks time. Do email me or leave me a message if you want to know more. So look for the subvertising. So we can have conversations about what's appearing. So if you see there automatically, I imagine my super subvertisers out there are looking at ways of saying how many monkeys there are without counting in ones. Lovely rhymes to join in with, more flowers as well. Gorgeous illustrations, look at this. Really happy, we've got, I think, the birds in the sky. Oh, because the way I was looking at it, it looked like birds and it's not, it's him going Arr. So the idea here, if I turn to, let's uh, for example, um, trying to pick an animal I know you can definitely do this next bit with, but oh, I know this one, okay. So here's the elephant page here. Now I followed a link the other day, and you may know about this already, but it's amazing, something I didn't know about. If you go onto Google and you put in elephant, you get an option, sorry, I'll show his bum there, I'll show his head. Uh, you get an option to uh, for a 3D elephant. And if you click on the 3D function, and it only works with certain animals at the moment, you will actually get a 3D version of that animal walking towards you on the screen. And there's all sorts of amazing things you can do. But again, something I've done with my children in the past is they choose an animal and we start to do some research on it. And there's something I'll post later. Chester Zoo is doing a come and meet the animals uh, free access thing. Wonderful. And I know a lot of the, there's many, many animal sites like, you know, through National Geographic and things like that that are doing access for children. So choose one animal, go and do some research on it, depending on the interests of the children and what you think that they can manage. Have a look about what it eats, how, how big it is, how long it lives, anything they're interested in. Um, so that could be an ongoing project for you know, a long time and for as long as they want to do it. So I'm sure you will learn a lot too. So Hungry Caterpillar, Rumble in the Jungle, just two books of, you know, there really is maths potentially in every single picture book. Uh, and I can begin to show you next week, as I say, people are joining me in group one, you know, much more specific ways of using things to develop subvertising, calculating, uh, rhythm, rhyme, repetition, all those things as well. So I hope that's helpful. And I look forward to hearing what you do. Don't forget, there's no rush for you to do everything today. But I would really recommend you go back and look at days one to six. 
but I hope it's been really helpful and I, it's so much more you can do with the ideas that I've shared.